how can I ask someone about their finances, right? Or how can I be like, is this the right house and put that pressure on someone? However, I found that those hard questions are the questions that lead you to going under contract, right? And um, I'm able to really narrow down the serious buyers from like warm and cold buyers. But sometimes like dealing with that confrontation, we've talked about this so much, like now instead of later, it's like saves you so much time. And then like when you realize like, if I would have asked that question two weeks ago or when we were like looking at houses, like you're saying, I would have saved all of this time and I wouldn't have to deal with deal all of this. Hi, everybody. Uh, John Carroll here with Your Real Estate Podcast. And today, I'm so excited. Uh, we have one of our team members, our rock stars, Priscilla Alonzo. She's been with us now for, gosh, what, Priscilla, probably four years? Four years, yeah. Four years, yeah. She's been a part of the Carroll Home Team. And the intention of the, the podcast is always to bring like a lot of value to the real estate community and to give back to share with our experiences with everybody and hopefully we could be helpful or useful to you in some way. So um, I'll introduce Priscilla. She, she um, Priscilla started with us three years ago. Uh, she started brand new. Uh, and today Priscilla is last year, she was a 37 unit producer, uh, 10 million in GCI, a little short of 10 million in GCI, which is fantastic. Um, and she's just increasing her business every year. So we're, I'm super excited to share you, um, Priscilla with everybody and, and just to kind of go through your experience. Hopefully you can be helpful to them and uh, with your experience and, um, yeah, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So I want to start off with just talking a little bit more about, I mean, why real estate, how you got started and I mean, what's, I mean, and how, like why why did you get started in this in this crazy business right place right time kind of scenario i mean we had this conversation yesterday during our you know our drive to the listing appointment but um that was not the plan that was not my plan at all my plan was to go to school become a dental hygienist clean up people's teeth for the rest of my life and um you know I didn't get to, into the program. Maybe that was like my first sign that I should have just taken it and been like, okay, this is not what I meant to do, right? But I didn't and I continued going to school. I continued trying to reapply for the program. And in the midst of it, I was like, well, I need to get a job. So, you know, you were looking for an assistant. And I said, okay, great. Like this is a part-time assistant job. I still have time for my kids. And I think it was what, like maybe a month into it, I was like, I can do this. I can sell real estate, make my own schedule. I saw the flexibility you had and just like really being in control of your, the amount of work you put in. Right. So that was really what intrigued me into wanting to explore real estate and not a nine to five. Right. Um, so that's really what got me started. And I just remember like knocking on your door and be like, Hey, I think I want to do real estate. And you're like, get your license. And I'm like, doing it. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that day. And I also remember like you you going like we were passing a lead out to somebody else and they weren't like, they were just dropping the ball sort of, so to speak. And you're like, I could do this. Like, like, why don't, why don't you just get the leads to me? And I was like, yeah, like, why not? Like that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I got my license, what, like three or four months after that. I mean, it took me some time cause I was still your assistant. Um, took me some time, but then once I got the license, it, I mean, it was really like go and I mean, every year it's just been getting better and better. Um, and that's really why I wanted to have you on. Um, and so I, I think a, a really great place to go from here is, I, what did you find when you're getting started? Because I think that your experience could be helpful for everybody, some like other people, right? And I know, um, so, but when you, you're getting started from, from the jump, what do you feel was like one of the most challenging parts of getting started and real estate in general? I mean- what was, what was the hardest part for you? Everything. <laughs> Every, everything was really difficult, right? Because though I saw you and I would help, you know, I was a transaction coordinator too. I was like everything right under you. Um, even though I did that part, actually talking real estate, knowing real estate was so different um, once you're in it. And no one really teaches those 
teaches you those things, right? Like the course doesn't, none of that. I think even going to like some of the realtor conventions and stuff and like, you know, being part of the MLS, they really don't teach you much, right? Um, that was really the biggest struggle for me. But luckily I was part of a team. You know, I had you, I had Rachel as a resource. Um, what I found most difficult was like those objections, right? How do you handle that? Because I can have a conversation all day long with people. I can help people. But when people start putting like a stop to you or stop to the business you're trying to sell, um, then it's like, how do I handle that? So for me, that was the most challenging. And I think what, what helped me with that was uh, role playing with you, like objection handlers. If someone says this, how, how do you answer? You know, if this comes up on an inspection, how do you handle that? Um, and I think I've gotten better with each transaction. I, I don't want to say better with every year because I feel like each transaction is so different. Totally. I mean, I'm, I'm, it's been four years and I'm still learning today. And I'm sure you're still like, you know, having transactions where you're like, oh my God, I've never dealt with this. Where's Rachel? <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. It's like, she's my lifesaver always. Right. Um, yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, always learning. Right. And that's one of the, what we're always talking about is like always improving because it's so true. It's like, we, we really learn, and I think in everything, but especially in this business, by just going forward and making mistakes, having someone say no to you and just being over to right. overcome that. And even if you overcome it or you don't or whatever happens, like there's, there's learning there. And I think it makes sense right. too, is, is just feeling more confident in getting more confident only through, through the experience of, of failing or succeeding or just taking action. Definitely. I, I definitely have learned that like when you get knocked down, when people, you know, say, I don't want this or I don't want your help or um, it's all a learning experience. I feel like I, you know, we have a new buyer's agent on our team and I always tell her like, hey, it's good to mess up. It's good because this is the way you're going to learn. I second that. I think that's I mean, that's really the only way that we've we've figured it out. I mean, I don't know. I mean, reading a book is, is helpful, but I mean, really learning just by just by doing, doing and failing, doing and failing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, um, I think, um, how long do you think it took you for, I know that, you know, getting started was a process, but how long do you think it took you to start feeling like, Hey, I'm, I'm feel, I feel comfortable. Like I kind of, I get it. I understand the process. I understand how, how, how it feels to work with buyers and sellers. I understand how it goes. How long did you think, how long did that take? I think for me, really, it took me at least four transactions. I don't want to say like four months, right? Because it could take, I mean, if you're not actively selling real estate, then I think that you're not putting in that work that you are um, learning. So for me, it was like really four to five transactions. And um, after that, I felt like I can do this. I've done four buyer five four to five buyer consultations i've done um the meetings i've done the showings i've done four or five inspections i've done the negotiations i've done this enough to feel comfortable to now like do it on my own not need your help nor rachel's help or like someone over me um to really feel comfortable be like i got this let's do it cool if you remember but i was dealing with one of my very first buyers and and um we were working her together susan and you were like, you know, did you put the offer in or something up, uh, around that? And I was like, um, I was like, oh, I don't know. You know, she's trying. He's like, and you said to me, I'm going to call her and I'm going to, I'm going to talk to her. And I was like, no, like, I'm going to like, like, I'm doing this. I have the knowledge. I can do this. And honestly, I think you saying that, like, I'm going to call her pushed me to like, show you I can handle it. Do you remember that too? Yeah, yeah, no, I totally, I, I do remember it. I was like, no, I'll, I'll, let me call her and let me ask her. You're like, no, no, she's, she's mine. I'm, I got this. I'm in control. Yeah. Like back off. I was like, no, she's fine. <laughs> I could do this. Let me show you that like, I'm a good agent. And I did. And like, we got her under contract and she closed and she loved the house that she was in. Yeah. And, and I don't know if you, you would agree with this, but I, I think for me, it's like a lot of times is, is just sometimes just going forward like that i know we, it sounds so cliche but like just like like going forward and taking the next step and just i know sometimes we're like hesitant about do it to do it but going forward taking the next step and like and succeeding right or failing like we just talked about being like okay got got it that was i, I was apprehensive i was a bit afraid of that but 
going forward is like, okay, I do got this. I can do it. Just having that like feeling of self-confidence and just to do it. A thousand percent. Once I got her under contract, I was like, you see, John, I could do this. And I was like, I'm ready for the next one. Who's my next victim? You know, who's my next client? <laughs> totally. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. That was great. That was great. It, it gave that confidence for me to be like, I can do this. I can do this without the help. Like I, I can, I can get someone under contract. Yeah. Yeah. So, so four transactions. Yeah. I, I would say. Yeah. I think that makes sense. Like it's enough to like yeah. have some, some good transactions, have some bad transactions and to feel like, okay, I, I understand the landscape here. You understand. Yeah. You understand the process. You understand what's needed from you. And like I said, though, like there's still questions till today and I'm sure you have them too, where you're like, how do I find resolution? How do I handle this? So I think real estate, it's, you're always learning, but to feel comfortable enough to like go forward with it. Yeah. For me, it was like four or five transactions. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Um, so yeah. um, what are, okay. So what are some things, you know, now after four years in the business, you know, 40 transactions, you know, give or take close in the year annual 10,000, 10, excuse me, 10 million GCI. Like what, it, what is like, what do you feel like, you know, now that you wish you would have known when you started or like maybe a perception of the business now that you like, oh, it's different than when I started. Well, the market's definitely changed since I started. Um, and we're kind of going back to where the market used to be when I initially started. Um, I guess what I know now that I wish I would have known before is um, asking those hard questions. I think in the beginning, I really wanted to be successful and I wanted to just show everybody houses and I wanted to sell property and I just wanted to go. I wanted to go and do do it all. And I think that now I've learned that and it's really important, right? Stick to your schedule and, you know, don't just on a whim or on a fly go and show property if someone's not pre-qualified, if someone is not so serious. So asking those hard questions, like before I thought, how can I ask someone about their finances, right? Or how can I be like, is this the right house and put that pressure on someone? However, I found that those hard questions are the questions that lead you to going under contract, right? And um, I'm able to really narrow down the serious buyers from like warm and cold buyers. Yeah. Um, so asking those tough questions and it, it might just be my personality, right? Cause I don't like, uh, putting people on the spot or making people feel uncomfortable. So, you know, how much money do you have right now? What down payment can you put? What can you afford? Um, you know, like what's wrong with this house? Like, what is it? Like, even just that simple question, like, what is it about this house? Like I'm putting them on the spot to tell me something that's like a little negative. Right. And, um, that was hard for me. That was hard, but it's definitely helped me now. Yeah. You know, and I think that you, we were talking about this, like your personality type is like, is someone that's like soft and like pleasant and, and uh, yeah. And which is, which is really actually really works well for real estate, it does. but also like, you know, asking hard questions sometimes can be difficult because you like, don't want to interrupt someone's day or like, inter like, con like deal with confrontation or whatever it is. But sometimes like dealing with that confrontation, we've talked about this so much like like now instead of later it's like saves you so much time and then like when you realize like if i would have asked that question like when you make that mistake and you ask that question like two weeks ago or when we were like looking at houses like you're saying i would have saved all of this time and i wouldn't have to deal with deal all of this all this headache right yeah so but yeah yeah, yeah. that's so asking like so asking harder questions being more direct being more comfortable asking those questions and right. yeah, got it. And we're like always getting, like I'm getting better at that. Like or I'm always getting better at that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think at the beginning when you're first starting your journey as an agent, right. You, you really, you don't, you almost don't want to ask questions that might not cause you to, uh, uh, to, to make a sale. Right. You're nervous about that question. You don't know what the answer is going to be. And it's kind of scary, right. When you're so close, um, to having a solid client. Right. And so I think that's what maybe made me nervous in the beginning was like, I have nobody, like I need to service everybody, even if it's just a little bit. And I, I found myself wasting a lot of time with a lot of people.
That's so true, right? Yeah, and I love that explanation because it's it is like I remember that with myself too. It's just being like you have a client and you don't want you don't want to mess it up, so you're afraid to ask the question that you almost know you need to ask, but you like you're just hoping that like hey, if maybe if I just yeah. bury my head in the sand, it will go away. <laughs> right? Kind of. And like when really in reality it doesn't go away. It just it's it's there and and it come it rears its head up in like yeah after like two weeks later a month later at the closing table when you're just like the worst case scenario like you like kick the can down the road yeah. okay yeah so um i guess what do you think like maybe some advice that you have now um that you from from after your experience of, of doing this and you feeling comfortable feeling successful like feeling like okay i'm moving to like maybe the next stage of of my business now i know we had that conversation yesterday like i just feel like i'm like moving to the next stage now um, what, do you, what is right. some advice that you would, you would give someone that's looking to get into real estate? I have a lot of advice, a lot of advice. Um, I think first and foremost, um, my advice, if you're a new agent is join a team. I think join a team. I think, I think that really helped me in the beginning too, you know, having, um, you and Rachel, I mean, our team was really small. It's just you and I, but Rachel was kind of like operations of it all. And she did real estate. So she was, you know, well-versed in real estate and so helpful. But I, first and foremost, join a team. See what people that are succeeding that you want to be like, right? In some sense, see what they're doing and do it and copy it, right? So, you know, I saw you and I was like, oh my gosh, he's role playing at seven in the morning for like an hour and then he's making phone calls and then, you know, da, 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 all this. So I remember I was role playing with someone from like Jersey who I'd never met before. And it was like 7 a.m. and I remember I would wake up and I'd on the phone with them, I had no idea who they were. Um, but, you know, I was like trying to mimic the success that I was seeing from you and the people around me. And I was like, well, if they're successful from doing ABC, I'm going to do ABC as well. I hate scripts, but love them at the same time because it does keep you, you know, kind of um, where you need to be and what questions are important. And um, it, it sounds a lot more professional, right? When you're going from a script and then making it your own. Um, that script practicing, joining a team um, and just having like, make sure you're finding the right team, right? Because you don't want to join a team where they're just hiring you on and they just leave you be. You want to join a team that that you know wants you to succeed as much as you want success for yourself, right? So I think that was something that was so helpful. It was like, you wanted me to succeed too. You know, me succeeding was important to you. You wanted to see me win. We built a relationship and you were excited to see me grow. And I think that ultimately helped me a lot too, because you wanted to help. You wanted to be involved in my success. And, you know, if I ever said, hey, I want to role play or like, hey, I'm having trouble with this. I mean, you and Rachel were always readily available to us, to me. Yeah, almost like too much sometimes. You're like, yeah, like, stop. Too much, too much. <laughs> Dad, I need help with this. <laughs> <laughs> too much talking. Um, yeah, it's. I think that, so. That's great advice. I, I love the advice of like, like real estate gives us an opportunity to like emulate people. We have so many examples we can, and we can get to like when you join a team and you can have someone that you can emulate, emulate yeah. and um, learn from and be close to. Right. And like you can, like they say, rip off and duplicate R and R. Yeah. Right. You can like just you can just learn, right? And you can learn so much quicker. Yes. Um, so yeah, I, I I think that's that's great advice for anybody new thinking about getting into the business. It's just gonna shorten the learning curve, I would agree completely. I mean one thousand percent, especially because you're coming into real estate and like I said, you don't know where to go. Like you get your license, what's next? Had I got my license and not had you as my friend, you know, I wouldn't have known what my next step was. I it would have all been so foreign to me. I probably would have not, not been able to be as successful. I probably would have been like, okay, you know what? Maybe this is not going to work out, you know? Um, but what is the next step after you get, get your license, right? Nobody tells you that stuff. Nobody tells you this is what you should do. You know, um, start small, like go door knock, friends and family. Who's your COI? What's a COI? You know, like no one tells you these things. Yeah, it's like, and like right? It's like, and there's like a certain way there's a couple of different ways to skin the cat, but like you, you have to like pick one 
and you have to like do it and there's you have to go with it like and like when i go door knocking like what do i say like i door knock what how many homes do i door knock like what areas do i door knock right like yeah how would you even know like you said how would you even know i don't i have no idea how would you even know but um yeah so i i think if your brand like i would i think that's great advice like just like join a team or get plugged in somehow i don't mean i don't know somehow to get to get the information yeah. you need so and if then after being part of a team you feel like you learned what you needed to learn and you feel like comfortable enough you know you can definitely you know be a single na- agent right you don't have to stay in this team forever but i think that first coming into real estate it's definitely helpful to be surrounded by people that are succeeding yeah no, i would agree 100 percent, 100 percent with that so h- how have yeah. your like this is a great dovetail into what we're on my next question how have your goals changed sure. now than when they when you first started like how are they different so my goals have changed like exponentially like i mean they're so it's insane how much in four years i'm like what i wanted four years ago is so different from now right when i first started real estate i was like very comfortable with just making some money just you know um being a team player in my household and just bringing extra you know and then it turned into oh my god i can really build such a beautiful life for not just myself and my husband for my like kids and leave them something grand right so then it switched it was like no longer like oh i just want to like you know be a team player in my household it became like oh my gosh i can actually it could be bigger than me it could be bigger than just like supplemental like income so you know i started with that then it was like well i can invest i can buy uh you know a, an investment property and i did that this year you know with your help i mean that was really my goal from the very beginning i was like i always wanted to get into investing my dad and um he was my dad was actually my first transaction he brought his um rental property right right i remember yeah that's right i forgot yeah i mean i remember now but yes that's right listen it is a conversation in our household at least once a week how me his favorite daughter was (laughs) able to save him thousands of dollars on his first investment property i mean the house is listed at 120 and he bought it for seventy six thousand dollars paid off i mean I'm his favorite, you know, he, so he doesn't live it down. And I love that he doesn't live it down because I, I helped him. So, you know, seeing my dad do that and then again, being surrounded by people like you and Rachel, I was like, okay, this is the next thing. Now I'm making money. Now I'm like, you know, hitting my goal number wise. Um, what can I do with that? Right. So I invested in my property this year, which is super exciting, you know, getting that duplex, you know, off the market. Um, And really my goals now are just, I feel like real estate now has become like a segue into like my investments. So now I'm not looking at it as supplemental income. I'm looking at it is what can I do with the money that I make this year? What can I invest in? How can I double this money? How How can I, you know, retire by the time I'm 40, you know, I'm 28 years old. How can I retire by the time I'm 40 and just have this abundant life with my family and not have to like sacrifice time anymore. Right. Um, So now I have the finances is now my goal is to have more time. I want more time with my family. I want more, I want my husband to have more time with us. You know, I don't know what the future looks like, but I'd be like, it would be amazing if like one day I could say, Hey, you know, I got this, you can retire. I can retire. We we're good. You know, I don't know if that's really at the end of the day, what we want, but I mean, that would be amazing to work, you know, no longer being like the goal is money. The goal is time. I want time now with my family. Yeah. To have the choice, right? right. Like, it's like, it's like, if I want, I choose to not work, I can. Yeah. Or like I had like that's that's a great they have freedom like like I think like ultimately right like a lot of times we're all like working for not really necessarily working for money but we're working for like what money can provide right. for the freedom right. to have more time with our family more time more experiences and that's so important to me like family is everything so like for me growing up like I you know I was with my family all the time so every every decision I make is time family time and family time and family so it's really important to me. And so that's how my goals have changed. It's no longer like, 
you know, I just want to work to bring money. And it's like, what can I do now that's going to give me time later? Totally. Yeah, I love that. It's like, and like what, what comes up for me when we're, like, what you talk about that, because it ha- it's tr- true for myself, is like being around people. And I have these people in my lives as well, including yourself, is like, is that that will like help me think the right about, like, you know, the what I want or like change my mind or open my mind up to possibilities of like, you know, what is real estate? What can I do with my career? What can I do with my finances? How can I grow? in to have better more experiences a more um a happier a better life i don't say necessarily happy but a more, better, life. <laughs> more fulfilled life right more things more choices right and how do i employ my capital or money to like to in a way that will like help me do that right and I'll, all of that it comes from just like being around right people and understanding a lot of that stuff i learned from people that are older than me. Right. And, or people that are in around me. Right. So, um, yeah, that's cool. I, I think that's, those are, and those are cool goals. Those are a lot of, a lot of similar goals that I have too. I like, I like that you're saying that those, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, well that I, I really appreciate the time that you're spending. I know you're busy and uh, in the middle of your day here and, um, I uh, I appreciate it, and um, I'd love to sit down with you again at any at any time. Yeah. And um, thanks for sharing your time with us. And uh, and uh, I guess do you have anything that you know you want to say or anything that's important? Um, or like a little nugget? Um, Rachel's really good at these nuggets. I'm not. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, no, just you know if. if if real estate is something you really are looking to do, or you're interested, um, get plugged in, get plugged in with the right people, surround yourself with, with people who, um, whose goals and aspirations are a little bit bigger than yours. Cause it, it's just really, it's really inspiring. Um, and I've been inspired by surrounding myself with people like John and Rachel and just like the team and just the bigger vision of like what life is, you know, it's like never, never dream too small. Yeah. I love that. I think that's the same. Never dream too small. <laughs> yeah, never dream too small. Right. That's, and I, you know, I was going to ask you too. I think that was what I really wanted to ask was like, what's what's some good advice that you've you've gotten? And I, I like that. I think that's great. A great way to end is ne- never dream too small. I think it's a, it's always always dream big, right? So thanks, right. thanks so much, Priscilla. Thanks for your time. Uh, and enjoy yeah. yourselves. Enjoy yourselves. Awesome. Thanks. Okay. Bye. See you later. Okay. Bye.